10. I think we know it by heart by now. No sense in me taking it off of the screen. Uh, Y'all going to look at it anyway. Amen. Come on. Normally we do it this way. We cut the screen off of those of you at home. We practice our memory verse that we have uh, with each other. Let's do it together on three. One, two, three, go. And, and have made us, us, us. Go ahead. And preach to our God. Uh -huh. And we shall reign on the earth. Amen. Let's do it one more time together. And have made and us kings, kings and, and priests unto our, our God. God. And we what? Shall we reign shall reign, reign on, on, the, on earth. the earth. Amen. Anybody want to reign? I want to reign in my individual life, in all areas of my life. How about y'all? How about you at home? Somebody just type in, let it rain, let, let it, it rain, rain, let it rain, let, let it rain. rain. Come on, go with me. We've been studying the kings of Israel and how the kings of Israel begin to reign on behalf of God. And finally, the Lord found a king by the name of David, a small shepherd boy who ends up becoming king and God reigns and leads Israel through him. He has a son named Solomon who sits on the throne for David on behalf of God after David passes and goes on to be with the Lord. And God gives Solomon instruction. He leads the people into God's presence. And somebody say, pray right. Pray right. Tell somebody, stay right. Stay right. Tell somebody, keep it tight. Keep it tight. Tom Solomon tells Israel how to keep it tight and to stay in the Lord's presence. Yeah. And the Lord's presence to stay with them. I don't know about y'all, but I want God's presence with me. Amen. How about y'all? I, I don't want to live life without God's presence. Amen. Amen. Somebody. Uh, and it's a horrible thing to be trying to operate and to live and do things in God's presence, not be with you. So those of you who are tuning in and streaming in, we've been talking about the reigning of the king and the presence of the Lord all month long. If you haven't shared this yet, share this. This will be the close of our series for this month. And we'll enter into where the Lord's taking us on the next month as we talk about how God delivers. But before he delivers, he's got to get you into his presence first. Can you say amen? amen. Would you go with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. Come on, say pray right. Pray right. Can somebody keep it tight? Keep it tight. Come on, let's all stand for the reading of God's word. Let's all stand for the reading of God's word so that we give honor and deference to the word of God. Amen. So 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. It's on the screen behind me. I'll be reading out of the New King James Version of the Scripture. You guys follow right along with me. The Bible says this in verse 1. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. I got to do it again. When Solomon had finished praying, Fire came down from heaven uh -huh. and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Would you look at somebody on your right and left? Say these words with me. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say, neighbor. neighbor. If we want the presence, we've got to pray. And if we're going to pray, we might as well pray right. Yeah, let's say it one more time. Say, neighbor, if you want God's presence in your life, you're going to have to pray. But if you're going to pray, you might as well pray right. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to talk to you. From the subject matter, prayer and his presence, the reign of the king. Quickly, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, God, that you desire to put the signature of your imprint on the body of Christ at large. And that, God, you desire to move in every household with every person. You desire each one of us to come to know you to the point, God, where there is the fire of God in our lives. Yes. 
God, that you put a boldness and you get this lethargy and laziness and apathy and uh, get that out of the body, Lord, and you give us a vigor and vitality and a vibrancy of the warmth of your presence and your embrace that becomes strong with us. That people, when they see us, they don't see us, but they see you. Thank you for what you are planning to do and even doing now throughout the body at large. Now hide me in you so that your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. Amen. Pray right. I'm going to talk to you this morning from the subject prayer and presence, the reign of the king. As we have sojourned through our theme this month, the reign of the king, we've come to understand that as God reigns in heaven, we reign on the earth. Can you say amen? amen. And so our memory verse speaks to that in this sense from Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. It says, it hath made us kings and priests and to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Here is what is significant about that, is that we are not necessarily priests and kings until God makes us. And he makes us through the person of Jesus Christ. When we find ourselves rooted and centered in him, there's a transformation process that takes place in our lives where we now move positionally in the heavens and we come alongside Jesus, our elder brother. That don't make too much sense until you understand that it's in him that we live and move and have our being. To be a Christian, to be saved, to be in relationship with God simply means this, that your position in Christ is for your position in God is rooted in Jesus Christ. And it's because of him that you have access to our kingship and access to the priesthood of all believers. Uh, this is important because God has given each of us an assignment as priests and kings. On the one end, God wants to put authority in your life. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. Tell somebody stay right. Stay right. Tell them keep it tight. Keep it tight. Yeah, God wants to put authority in your life so yeah. that when you begin to pray, things begin to happen. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Amen. There's no sense of you wasting your time with what I call please don't be offended with my vernacular this morning, but I only can be who I am and be myself. Ain't no sense of you get down to the altar and doing a whole bunch of psycho babble and whining every five minutes. If you're going to get to the altar and you're going to sacrifice getting up two or three o'clock in the morning to pray, it might as well be with a result at the end of your prayer. And what God wants to do is put his authority in your life so that as you pray, you've got the ability to move heaven and earth, to call heaven to attention, to show up on earth on your behalf. Somebody say pray right. Tell somebody stay right. Tell them keep it tight. Yeah, God also wants you to be a priest, an intercessor. Come on, say that with me. Intercessor. God wants you to have the ability to be able to pray on behalf of another person or to do what Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 on the screen behind me says. Look at it if you will. Ezekiel says this, that God spoke to him in chapter 22 and verse 30. It says, so I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land. Watch it. That I should not destroy it. God looks for people who he has their attention. That God says, I need you to pray about this. And I need you to stand in the gap. You know, the gap would be that chasm, that long distance between the will of God and calamity. Between destruction and God's promises. Between the ability to have godly success or to experience demonic failure. That gap exists for each and every one of us. And God says Satan is intended on destroying your life today. But I got somebody like your grandparents who's still praying for you. That while you are acting the fool, when the bullet should kill you, it misses you. And you end up living anyway. And the plan of the devil is destroyed. I feel my help up to come on early this morning. God wants us to become kings and priests before yeah. our God so that when we pray, we pray with authority and when yeah. we pray, we intercede to keep evil from happening. Yeah. Come on, yeah. can you say amen? Yeah. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. Tell somebody stay right. Pray right. 
Come on at home, clap it in, tell somebody, keep it tight. The reality, beloved, is that all of us as children of the living God are on assignment for God. I think, Mike, that's a shift that's got to take place in our mentality. Oftentimes, we come before the Lord. This is why I said, I don't want you to ask God for nothing. I want you to begin to say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my attitude. Forgive me for my thought life. Lord, forgive me for my behavior. Before you start asking God for stuff, would you do this for me? real quickly now our environment has been sanitized and you got on masks this morning so you can do this with me come on somebody take me in a deep breath just breathe in this morning what has just happened is you just experienced God you, you just experienced God. Isn't it a crazy thing sometimes that the devil is trying to pollute the atmosphere so that you cannot experience God? Every breath you breathe comes from God. You're not alive today unless God gives you breath so that you can begin to breathe in the breath of life. That the devil wants to begin to pollute an atmosphere, but I think that God still got some people who are kings and priests in the earth. Some people with authority who are praying and with the priesthood of intercession that's keeping evil from just wrecking our lives. Come on, can you say amen? Listen, the reality is, is that we all have an assignment. We've been dispatched from heaven into the realm of the earth through the womb of a woman with a clear assignment, watch this, of extending heaven into the earth among all human populations. First Peter 2 and 9 is the qualifying verse for it. It says this, but you are a chosen generation. Somebody say, I'm chosen. You are a royal priesthood. Come on, somebody say, holy nation. Bible says his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him Come on in here, who called you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. I like 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. It says this, Paul to the Corinthian church wrote these words. He said, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That God has sent you to become an ambassador, to be reflective of who he is. Is, so that when people see you, they will desire God. That means God's got to put blessing in your life. That means God's got to put promise in your life. Let me pause right here. In the midst of this kind of a pandemic, you can go through not heaven and all kinds of high water, but you're still making it in your right mind each day, handling all of your business. And somebody wondering how in the world are you able to sustain yourself and be in your right mind? You know that is God working on your behalf. Somebody say, say right, pray right, tell somebody to keep it tight. See, our call as kings and priests are to intercede and call others back to God through Jesus Christ. The difficulty for us in accomplishing and completing this mission and assignment is that we've been trying to do all of that victor without his presence. We've been trying to accomplish the task and accomplish our life purpose without the presence of God. See, we are in a season now, a season of time now, where our gimmicks and tricks and, come on preachers, hear me, our strategies and plans and our analysis uh, that produces paralysis in my behalf or in my perspective, all are becoming obsolete. I put this post out there uh, this past week. I said, we spent all our time after we finished arguing inside of the boardroom. We finished discussing and getting on everybody else's nerves about what color the carpet is going to be, who's going to be in charge, and why they get to make that decision. And this one can't do this, and that one can't do that. And why is that one preferred over me? How come I don't got a title? Why ain't let me preach it? How come I ain't get the solo right yet? And why I can't work in Christian ed? And why I can't be the greeter? When we get finished on and who going to handle the money, and who going to make the decisions? When we get finished doing all of that, there still is a world on its way to a devil's hell, and we have got to fulfill our assignment so that somebody's soul will be saved. Somebody say, pray right. Come on, stay right. Come on, type it in. Somebody say, keep it tight. I'm not saying, listen, y'all, I'm not saying that we don't need strategy in this hour. I'm not saying that we don't need creativity and ingenuity in this hour. What I am saying is that the creativity and the ingenuity and the strategy that we need, Mother Harmon, all of that.
that's got to come from the presence of God. Amen. If God ain't talking, me and a couple of little bitches, we were walking yesterday in the airport on our way back from watching the eulogizing and participating in one of the great leaders of our time, and Bishop J.D. Ellis, and we said to ourselves, in this season, ain't none of us got nothing to say. If God ain't talking, we quiet. And what I believe God is saying is that he wants his people to come back and get into his presence. I believe I hear the Lord saying that we spend so much time trying to figure stuff out on how to do when God is saying, I'll tell you what to do if you will come and have a conversation with me and get back in my presence. Yeah. Somebody say, pray right. Pray right. Stay, right. Stay right. Tell somebody, keep it tight. Keep it tight. Psalm 16 and 11 feel my help now. The Bible says this. I've been saying it all month. David said, you will show me the path of life and in your presence is the fullness of joy. Here's David. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We've been trying to go after pleasures not realizing that God's pleasures come from being in his presence. Come on, can you say amen? amen. And if we in the body of Christ corporately and us individually, if we will return to the presence of God with our prayer lives, God will show up in a magnanimous way that will blow our minds like we have no, never no, seen God. before. Come on, say amen. amen. The text says this. The text says, when Solomon, who is the king, Mike, when Solomon, who is the king, David's son, when Solomon, who is the king, David's son, after David's sin, after David's repentance, after David had gotten it right, Solomon, the king's son, the text says, not right, the text says, when he had finished praying, the Bible says, Sister Donna, that fire came down from heaven. Now, now I gotta resist the temptation and the urge to do what I want to do because y'all know Laban told me I can't tell the story of the woman anymore who stands on the roof in her house who walks by or with all of the cultural social issues of our day and time and she hollers out fire. She told me I can't tell that story no more. So I ain't gonna tell that story no more. But what I am gonna say is this. I'm gonna not tell the story but I'm gonna ask us a question. When was the last time that we came out of prayer and the fire of God was upon us? When we got bold, so when people when people got around us, they started changing their attitude, actions, and behavior because God's presence was so strong with us. I got to do it just one more time for old time's sake. Somebody holler, fire! God needs the fire in your life so that somebody, when they see you, they can begin to ask you how it is that you changed your life, Margaret. How it is that you made it through the not heaven that you made it through. How it is that you're getting through every single day. You can respond and tell them it's the fire of God. I don't know why God chose me. I don't know why he wanted to put his hand in my life. All I know is that there's fire. Somebody say it one more time. Fire. Fire on the inside. I think if we get to the point where we begin to carry the presence of God again like fire, when we begin to be bold again, there are some things happening in the earth that will not happen when the people of God come out of God's presence. Yeah. Now here's my question. My, my question for the remainder of the story of the text for this morning uh, is, it, is, is what kind of prayer did Solomon pray mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that caused God to respond with fire? Yes, sir. What, what, what kind of prayer did Solomon, what in the world is going on with Solomon that God responded to him with fire. Now, I don't want you to get too caught up with the fire. But what I do want to say to you is that the fire represents God's presence. So, so I can ask it better this way, Sister Hannah, Mother Hannah. Uh, what in the world is going on with Solomon so that after he finished praying, that God showed up with his presence that was undeniable? I don't know about y'all, but I, I want the presence of God to show up in my life so that when the naysayers get to talking, I feel preaching now. When folk get to putting their mouth on you, I feel it now. When, when, when folk get to say, God not with you and you not saved because you got a few issues here and there. The presence of God shows up so strong that it's undeniable that you've been with God. And I think that what Solomon does in this text, well, I got to be honest with you this morning, it's kind of 
kind of setup because the message don't come from this text. The message comes from the preceding text of chapter 6. But what I did was I did the homework for you ahead of time. So all you got to do is take the notes and flow with me on the screen. Is that all right? So you have to understand chapter 6 in order to understand chapter 7. And one of the prayers, so the question now becomes, what kind of prayer do I got to pray so that God's presence shows up like fire in my life. Anybody want to know this morning what kind of prayer you got to pray so that God's presence shows up like fire in your life? He was the very first one. Write it down. It's the prayer of repentance. Yeah, write it down. Come on, pull out your cell phone, take some notes. If you want God's presence to show up like fire in your life so that he, it is undeniable that you've been with him and he's been with you, you've got to pray the prayer of repentance. Write this down. Somebody put it in the comment section in the chat this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 6 verses 22 through 23 is where we get our answer from. In verse 22 it says this, if anyone sins against his brother and is for to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple. Remember Solomon had to re rebuild the temple of the Lord so that there would be a sign of the Lord's presence. He says go before an oath before your altar in this temple. Then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteousness by giving him according to his righteousness. What I love about this text is is that none of us are capable of obtaining righteousness in and of ourselves. In and of ourselves, we are not able to obtain our own righteousness. This is why we need God. And the prayer of repentance is a prayer of the acknowledgement that God, I need you. I'm not righteous in and of myself. And God, I need your help in my life. Whenever you begin to acknowledge, Lord, I need you, his presence will show up. I like this because Solomon, the way that he gets God to show up in chapter 7, Solomon got the right pedigree. Solomon is born into the right family. Solomon actually is supposed to be on the throne because he's his father's heir. But Solomon does not get the big head. Solomon says, God, I need you. If you don't show up, ain't no sense in me sitting here. Come on, say every man if you can. Somebody say, pray right. Come on, somebody say, stay right. Stay right. Tell somebody to keep it tight. keep it tight. Romans 3 and 23 says this for all the religious folk that are watching online right now. For all, somebody shout all. Oh. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can I say to us this morning, this is why you can't never judge nobody. That's right. You can't never judge nobody. You can't put your mouth on people because we all got some sin. And he hears my shout again, Victor. I didn't say it again before, but I will say it again this morning. Just because your sin is different from my sin, don't give me the right to judge your sin and my sin not be judged. Come on in here, somebody. Oh, you all got some sin. The Bible says all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. And we all need God's righteousness to bring us back in alignment with Him. And just because yours is different from mine and mine is different from yours, don't make me more holy than you and don't make you more holy than me. We all all are the same at the foot of the cross. Come on in here, somebody. We are the same at the foot of the cross. It is why the cross of Calvary handles our sin issue for us. And when God handles the sin issue for us, it causes us now to become candidates for the glory of God in our lives. This is why repentance, the prayer of repentance is so necessary. And can I say this? Repentance is not, I'm sorry. Repentance is not our sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's so quiet that a centipede is shouting on the velvety red carpet this morning. Uh, the, 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 the repentance is not I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it's not I'm sorry. I got caught. Repentance is this right now. It's I changed my mind and I changed my perspective. That's what repentance is. Repentance is, Lord, I thought I was right doing it this way, but now I understand, God, that, that you got a better way. And I trust your better way. God, I'm sorry. I just couldn't see it. 
this Lord I see light now from your vantage point look at this one more time in the text with me it says if anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before the altar in this temple somebody say in this temple he says if anyone sins against your neighbor y'all remember what the greatest commandments were don't you on the screen behind me Matthew 22 through 36 through 40 watch what Jesus says he answers the questions for his disciples he says teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law Jesus said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart mind soul and strength come on y'all know that one and the second one is like it he says and you shall love your neighbor as yourself don't come talking to me about how much you love God and you can't love the person on your own. Don't talk to me about your tongues and you just nasty, mean, and hateful. Don't talk to me about your ministry gift and you can't learn how to get along with people in close proximity to you. Uh, the, the Bible calls that, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but the Bible refers to that as a clanging sound and a twinkling symbol. In other words, you making a whole lot of noise and ain't saying nothing because I can look at your life and see if you really love or not. Somebody say, I need the kind of prayer that will bring the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, pray right, say right, keep it tight. If you want the kind of prayer that brings the presence of the Lord in your life, not only do you need the prayer of repentance, but you need the prayer of a return. So I tell somebody, pray right. You need the kind of prayer of a return that will bring you back to God. I want to talk to all the people that knew God but then walked away because pressure came on them. I want to tell you this is the kind of prayer where you've got to return back to God. Tell somebody, I'm coming back, Lord. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I want to talk to somebody watching us on our website this morning or somebody watching online on our social media page. If you mean business with God, come on. Don't you worry about the social media audience and who's watching. Put it inside of the chat room or the comment section. Put it in there. I'm coming back, Lord. I'm coming back. The Bible says that God is married to the backslider. In other words, when you slide back, God still got his hand on you. When you're in the midst of your messy situation, God is still with you right in the middle of your mess. Somebody say, I'm coming back to God. When we say return back to God, watch this, we mean return to the person of God in Christ Jesus. We often return to people, programs, and to some degree the process, but mainly the blessing of God or the promises of God come in your life when you return back to God who is your first love. In other words, when you put God first in every area of your life. Can I go back in the text of chapter 6 and verse 24 on the screen behind? I mean, it says this, come on, for those of you watching at home, it says, if your people who Israel, who are defeated before an enemy, because they have sinned against you and return and confess your name, God help me, and pray and make supplication before you in this temple, can I do it again? If your people who are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, in other words, you have got jacked up because of your own sin, and you return Watch this. And confess your name and pray and make supplication before you. The Bible says, come on, look here. The Bible says, confess your name and make supplication before you. Now, you may ask them the question like I asked, why the name? Why is the confessing of the Lord's name important? Can I pause right here and have an interjection moment? I promise you it's that ice of Jesus. But can I just flip the script for a minute? Isn't it an interesting thing, Vic, that we are in a season and time where everybody wants to call everybody's name? You, you can say every name, but you can't say the name that has been given to the Lord, made manifest in the human flesh that came through the Virgin Mary, lived on this earth 33 years, came from 40 and 2 generations. You can't mention that name, but we believe that if we call everybody else's name, that calling their name, particularly for us with some dark skin, that that's going to solve our problems. I, I appreciate the Black Lives Matter movement, and I believe that Black Lives Matter, even if the Black Lives movement don't believe that God matters. God can still use that movement but they can't believe that God will 
will show up just by the mentioning of somebody else's name who has fallen. Come on, let me give you some history. Y'all looking at me like I got five heads right here. I might as well break it down. Somebody say break it down, preacher. Break, break it down. down. Break, break it down. Break it down. So, 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 so a part of our history in terms of our cultural anonymity and our ethnicity as dark-skinned, melanin-oriented people from the continent of Africa, we practice all different kinds of religions that are apropos and significant to us in terms of our engagement with the spirit realm. And let me say this for all of our brethren of a different skin tone who happen to be more evangelical as they believe that we are just because the basis of our religion and our worship unto God doesn't look like the form and the fashion of yours don't mean it's demonic. Amen. I gotta pause and put my foot in that right there. Y'all don't gotta hold on Christianity and gotta hold on Protestantism more than us as African dark skinned people. Matter of fact, St. Augustine was a brother and an African that was responsible for developing the doctrine of our faith of how we even understand God in the West. Amen. I have to say that for somebody who gonna misconstrue what I'm about to say. So let me put my foot in that right there. Somebody say pray right. Pray right. Somebody say stay right. Stay right. Tell somebody keep it tight. Keep it tight. Tell somebody break it down, Pastor. Break it down. Break it down. Break it down. So listen, when you start to understand the ontological perspective of how it is that we orient to God, we are a spiritual people and we are a communal people. And as a part of our history in terms of our spirituality and our communal connections with each other, whenever an ancestor or a loved one passed, the way that we kept the ancestor or the loved one alive is that we would say their name. Now historically when we say their name that would mean to keep their consciousness with us. Now understand the Bible. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That means that their consciousness has gone on to be with God to receive a reward for the works that they have done in the body. And let me tell you the trickery of the devil. What the trickery of the devil is is that many believe that they were communing with their ancestors. They were not. They were communing with the demonic spirits. Y'all better hear me this morning. And as they were communing with demonic spirits, whenever they would call the person's name, they believed that the person would talk back to them. That was a demonic manifestation of divination. And the Bible has told us, stay away from divination. Stay away from mediums and spiritists who conjure up demons. So in our movement today, many of the three sisters, I'm not hating on them, I promise y'all, because black lives Lives do matter yes, sir, and yes. God's life matters to black lives yes, but if we want to get out of the not heaven that we are in in this country in this time we will have to call on a different name yeah. look at somebody and say say his name say his yeah we will have to call on a different name yes, there sir. is no other name under heaven whereby which men can be saved yes, I know somebody turning a deaf ear to me I know they're turning me off right about now but I gotta say to somebody it is the name of Jesus yes, that will make a difference for us in our lives yes, if we will get serious about calling his name yes. I'm talking about to where public policy changes Amen. somebody say say his name say I'm name. talking about when we begin to love each other somebody say say his name say I'm name. talking about when innocent people don't lose their lives in the streets somebody say say oh, his name say we name. got to pray right and we got to stay right and we got to keep it tight yes, I have to put my foot in it one more time. Somebody say, break it down, Pastor, break, break it down. down Pastor, if it God down. does not deal with America, you do know America's under judgment right now, don't you? If God doesn't finish dealing with America and how it is treated as dark and as black and as brown people, then God will have lied to us about justice and righteousness. But the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Come on, y'all better talk to me. Nor is he the son of man that he should repent. And he just said it. He he shall perform it. He shall make it so. He shall make it good. And we are right in the middle of a season right now where our nation is under judgment from God, which is why I'm telling you at 12 noon tomorrow, you got to get on your face and ask God, have mercy. Have mercy on us as a nation. Have mercy. Have mercy on us as a country. Have mercy. Have mercy on the White House. Have mercy. Have mercy on the God to have mercy. Yes, somebody right. say pray right. Pray say, right. Stay right. Tell right. somebody keep it tight. Keep it tight so if we're going to pray and ask God for his presence, we need to make sure that we pray 
a prayer of return. Anybody want to come back to him like I want to come back to him? Amen, yes, sir. Yeah, I want to come back to him. Come on, can I get to the next one here? If we want the kind of prayer that produces the presence of God, and if you want God to show up like fire in your life, you need the kind of prayer that will turn you right. Somebody yes, say, sir. turn me right, turn Lord. Me right. Yeah, I'm crooked and I'm bent in some places, but God turned me right. Somebody said, I gotta change my ways. I gotta change my ways. Anybody believe that this morning? Amen. Yes, I gotta sir. change my ways Amen. in yes, some areas. I don't know about y'all, I'm just talking to me. Uh, verse 26 and 27 of, of, of chapter 6 says this. It says, it says to us, um, uh, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. This is Solomon praying in the temple. When they pray toward the place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, that you may teach them. Here it is. The good way. Somebody say the good way. The good way. Teach them the good way that they should walk and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. Did y'all hear what Solomon said? Solomon said hear them but God teach them the good way. Somebody say when you know better you know come better. on somebody say when you know better y'all you know ain't talking. Somebody say when you know better, you, know better. you do better. I'm going to act like I'm your granddaddy from about three or four generations. Come on, you're going to have to open your mouth, baby. You might open your mouth. Somebody and say, when you know better, when you, know better. you do better. Y'all no, didn't say that. I'm going to have to act like your great granddaddy. Somebody go get my cane right now. Come on, say, when you know better, when you, know better. you do better. There's some things you just didn't know to do. You just kind of did it your way. But God Sorry. says, if you know better, you'll do better. Amen. Come on, somebody say, change my ways. Change my ways. Proverbs 14 and 12 says this. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but in its end, it's the way of death. Somebody say, pray right. Pray right. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 on the screen behind me. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Here it is. In all your ways, acknowledge. Him. Come on, and he shall direct your path. Amen. Psalms 95 and 10. Come on. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, It is a people who go astray in their hearts and they don't know my ways. Here we are again. Psalm 107 and 7. And he led them forth by the right way that they may go to a city for a dwelling place. Somebody say, if you want God's presence, God's presence come on, you got to change your ways. You got to change your ways. Come on, say it one more time. If I want God's presence, if I, want God's presence I got to change my ways. What does that mean, preacher? What does that mean? I'm so glad you asked the question. You can't cuss folk out. Somebody say, change your ways. Change your ways. Tell somebody, pray right. Pray right. Tell them, stay right. Stay right. You can't gossip, murder, complain, and so discord. Somebody say, change your ways. Change your ways. Tell somebody, pray right. Pray right. Tell them, stay right. Stay right. You can't undermine and create contention and disconnection. Somebody say, change your ways. Change your ways. Tell somebody, pray right. Pray right. Tell somebody, stay right. stay right. See, oftentimes when we talk like this on a Sunday morning, we focus in on the great big sins that people do. God is no such, so much concerned about your addiction issues, whether it's alcohol, drugs, or your promiscuous sexual activity. He's concerned about it. But God is not, that's not going to keep God from talking to you. What keeps God from talking to you and his presence coming in? your life is when you know something to do right and you choose not to do what is right but to do what is wrong from a position in your heart. God is more upset when you lie and you know you lie than whether you telling him the truth. God is more than somebody say change your ways. He's more concerned with you creating innuendo and gossip and rumors when you know what you're saying is not true. You just create putting gasoline on a yes, fire that ain't even lit you trying to start something. Yes, God is more concerned about that kind of activity than he is the other kind of activity in terms of these great big things because at least uh, look I, I'm trying to hold myself and keep myself in here. I don't want to come on down all the way from where I'm from but at least street folk know how to treat you right. Sir, street true. folk will tell you if I don't like you, I don't like you. And we, and we oil and we water. They're not going to smile in your face and then cuss you behind oh, your back. Yes. I'd 
rather know where I stand with you than you yeah. play. Come on, is anybody in here with me? Then you play games with me. Yeah, God does not like rumors, gossip, and in you yeah, know. God wants us to get our character right. Somebody say, pray right, pray right. stay right, pray right. keep it tight. We get out of here now. Come on, if you want God's presence to show up in your life uh, that manifests itself by fire, I promise you, we get ready to get out of here. Then you've got to learn the prayer of redemption and rescue. Come on, somebody write it down. Redemption and rescue. Redemption and rescue. One more time. Somebody type it in. Pray right. Pray right. Stay right. Stay right. Keep it tight. I hope this is helping somebody in here this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the Andrew Johnson song. I can't sing it, my voice is too up. But Lord, deliver me. Is there anybody that wants God to deliver you this morning? Look, we get out of here. Solomon said this uh, 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 in verse 28. He said, when there is a famine in the land, when there is pestilence or a pandemic or blight or mildew or locusts or grass." When their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whenever plague, somebody say pandemic, whenever plague, somebody say pandemic, whatever sickness there is, look at verse 29, Solomon, whenever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands to the temple, then Solomon says in verse 30, then hear from heaven your your dwelling place. Look at God and forgive and give everyone according to their ways whose heart you know for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men. God is looking for people in the earth who have a heart cry and a heart try posture with him that says Lord you know better than I do so Lord I come to trust you. I don't know how I'm going to figure this thing out but God trust you. I don't know how I'm making it through this, but Lord, I trust you. God is looking for people who will throw their hands up and say, Lord, deliver me. The prayer of redemption and rescue is a prayer of humility and grace. And the Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The Bible reminds us that the way up in the kingdom is town. When you get low enough, God will get high enough in your life to help you right where you are. But you can't continue to try to fake it until you make it. You need God to show up for you each and every day. It's the prayer of rescue and redemption. Lord, remember me. Two thieves were on the cross. One on the one side tried to get all high and mighty. If you, the Son of God, come down and save yourself. The other one on the other side looked at the other one across from Jesus. Can I Raymondize it and say, hush your mouth. This man is here because he's done no wrong. But you and I, we have done wrong. We just is wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. And this man says, Lord. He calls him Lord. Bible doesn't say he's a Jew, but he calls him Lord. Y'all just missed that. He says, Lord, remember me. The Bible don't say he's a Jew. The Bible just says that he calls Jesus Lord. The man in the midst of his sin, about to die, called Jesus Lord, which is to say you are sovereign above all things. You are master. You are ruler. He says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Is there anybody in here this this morning that wants God to remember you, to remember you. In other words, Lord, I done messed up my life, a little piece of me over there. My mind is over here. My heart is over there. My money is over here. But God, remember me. Anybody want God to put you back together again? No, what Jesus says to the, what the man says to Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, if there's any time we need the kingdom of God, it's a time that we need the kingdom of God right about now. And it's the kingdom of God that will put you back together again. It's the righteousness. It's the peace. And it's the joy in the Holy Spirit that will put your life back together again. Somebody say, Lord, remember me. We're getting out of here right here. Here is 
raise the shout for me on the rescue of the message. And we get out here, we close it right here. This is the one that really helped me understand beyond redemption and beyond rescue. It's relationship. Somebody write it down. Relationship. It's relationship. Note what Solomon says at the end of his prayer. I want to go and read it to us again. Now I finally get to chapter 7 of the message this morning. Now we're finally here. Look at the deep clause of verse 3. The Bible says that when Solomon finished praying, that the presence of God showed up and answered Solomon's prayer by fire because Solomon had relationship with God. You know, relationships are two-sided. There are requirements on one side and requirements on the other side. You can't enter into relationship with God unless you're willing to meet the requirements. And the requirements, we've done them this morning of redemption and of rescue and of repentance and of a return and a turn back to God. That's the requirement for the relationship with God. When you're willing to give God the requirements, God says, now I know I can trust you with my presence. And when Solomon does the requirements, God keeps his word. I feel preaching now, but we got to get out of here. I said, whenever you do the requirements on your part, God will keep his word. As a matter of fact, God even jumps ahead of you and helps you keep his word and fulfill his requirements even when you don't want to. That's why you still feel the presence and the pull of his spirit on you. His father David said, Lord, don't take your spirit from me because it's the spirit of God that draws us into his presence. What did Paul say? When I would do good, evil is there present with me so that what I don't want to do, I end up doing so that I will end up doing the stuff that I hate. But thanks be to God, his presence will keep drawing you close to him. I fear the Bible now. If you draw near to me, God says, I'll draw near to you. And Solomon drew near to God by keeping the requirements of the Lord. And here is the shout. I got to get out of here. We got to go home. The Bible says this, that as a result of the fire, then the people worship God, our relationship, saying this, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, somebody say, he is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, try with me. He is good. I have to quit y'all, but it's mercy and do it forever. So you don't know mercy until you've ever been guilty. But when you've been guilty, God's mercy shows up and you don't get what you deserve. You get what God wants to give you and that's his presence strong in your life. I hear David say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Anybody wants surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come on, stand on your feet. We got to go all quick right here. And mercy to follow me on the days of your life. That comes because of your relationship with God. Come on, can you clap your hands and give the Lord a praise for that right there? Come on, all the people who want relationship, who got relationship with God. Come on, you lift up your hands and you lift up your voice before the Lord this morning. I believe God wants to meet somebody watching me right where you are. Listen, come on, y'all keep worshiping. Let me talk to somebody at home who's watching this morning. Listen, let me say this to you. Relationship with God is easy. God's already done his part. When Jesus hung his head on the cross and said, it is finished, he really meant it is finished. See, see, relationship and connecting with God, connecting with God by way of relationship has to do with something very simple. It has to do with that very first one we mentioned today. We don't say that word repentance too much in certain in church now. It becomes uh, too much of a dirty word. But what I want to say to us is that we can't enter in with God's presence until we have a change of mind. And a change of mind begins with confession. The yes, Bible says in uh, 1 John 1 and 9, if I confess my own sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my own sin. And then watch this. Here is the shout. Cleanse. Somebody say, watch me, Lord. Watch me, Lord. 
cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Yes, and so I want to pray for somebody this morning. I feel that thing in there that somebody is like, God, I love you. I want you. I need you. But I need a cleansing. I got to get the residue yes. off of me. Come on. If I'm talking to you this morning, I'm praying for you. Come on. I got to get the residue yes. of this life experience off of me. I want to pray yes. for somebody this morning. You don't know Jesus. But you don't know him at the point that you've got condemnation. The Bible says now, therefore, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. In other words, you're free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. But I want to pray a prayer of a washing this morning. Come on, let's do it like this. Say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Wash me. I repent from my sin. Come on, say, I repent from my sin. I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Be my Savior. And my Lord, Lord Jesus, save me from myself and this world. I believe, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. I am now saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. Clap your hands for those who receive him this morning. Come on. Let me pray for those in here and those watching. We're not fin quite finished yet. Father, in Jesus' name, you saw, Lord God, those who raised their hands in their hearts. And so, Lord, I pray this morning for a washing and a cleansing of the Holy Spirit. God, that would come upon those, Lord, who are watching me at home. And even in this room, move up and down the highways. Wash our minds, God. And wash our thoughts, Lord. And wash our hearts Cleanse us. Get the residue of yesteryear off of us. God, that we can walk afresh and anew in relationship with you because you love us and you care for us deeply. We thank you now, Lord, for what you've done for all of us through your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for that this morning. Listen, let me say, those of you who are watching and you prayed that prayer, I want you to do one other thing. I want you to text the word believer to 40691. Text the word believer to 40691. And what will happen is there are four videos that are going to open back up on the screen and then put your information in and then it'll open up one more again. And then there I am teaching you with four simple lessons of what it means to be a Christian. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Amen. 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 That God utilizes us to help people grow in their faith. Let me say this. Somebody say baptism. baptism. Come on, somebody say baptism. baptism. That's the end result of learning what it means to be a Christian. And our very own uh, Victor will be baptized. And a young man named Zion uh, who grew up in this church, they'll be baptized next Sunday. So Mitchell, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for that. We're going to still practice social distancing, but we're going to do some baptism around here in Jesus' name. Come on, let's do these. Uh, takeaways. Anybody like them besides me? Let's do yeah. these takeaways yeah. and we'll be on our way out of here this morning. Let's do them um, together. Let's start on three. One, two, three, go. In 2020, I will pray for the Lord's presence in my life. I will pray for a change of mind. Go ahead. I will pray for a change of heart. Uh huh. I will pray for a change in action. Yeah, change of mind, heart, and actions. Amen. Come on, let's go to the next one. One, two, three, go. In 2020, I will pray for the Lord's presence in my life. I will pray and return to God. Go ahead. I will renew my commitment to the Word of God. Uh -huh. I will renew my commitment to the ways of God. Yeah. I will renew my commitment to worship God. Yeah, the Word, the ways, and worship of God. Come on, let's go to the next one. Takeaways for the day. One, two, three, and 2020. I will, I will pray. pray for the Lord's presence in my life. Uh -huh. I will believe God for his rescue plan for me. Yeah. I will trust the process of God. Yeah. I will trust the plan of God. Uh -huh. I will trust the people God sends. Yeah. I will trust the purposes of God in my life. Let's do them four bullet points again. Those were good right there. Let's do it one more again. One, two, three, go. I will, I will trust, trust the process, process of God. I will trust the plan of God. Uh -huh. I will trust the people God sends. I will trust the purposes of God in my life. I'm going to stop right here. This is the moment where I'm going to give you the chance to pull out your phone. I want you to take a picture of this one. And this is the one that you tweet, text, post, and share with those that you are connected with and are connected with you. This is the one right here. Because oftentimes we struggle with God's process because we don't know what he's doing. Sir. 
We struggle with his process because we're not too sure what he's doing. And then the process leads us to the plan. And, and I want to just say this real quick. There's a whole other message. I don't got time to preach it. But the plan leads to a person. And, and what you understand, you go through the process and get on God's plan. God's going to lead people to you that will be an answer to you for God in terms of what he wants to do for you. I'm telling you, this is the one. And then you've got, once you get the right uh, uh, people and you follow the plan and the process, you are then fulfilling the purposes. Mm -hmm. and if you got nothing else out of this message today, this screen right here can keep you till 2021. I want you to tweet, text, post, and share that one right there. And put use the hashtag, stay right, pray right, keep it tight. Use that hashtag when you share that. Amen, somebody? Amen. Come on, let's go to the last one. Hopefully everybody got it. Let's do it together. One, two, three. In the year of 2020, I thank God for insight, foresight, and hindsight. Come on, quickly, let's pray. Father, in Jesus, and thank you uh, for those dominionaires who gathered this morning. And Lord, who are watching my stream today, thank you, God, Lord, that you are going to birth these prayers in their lives. Over these next 24 hours in Yom Kippur, God, we lay our lives down before you. Lord, we ask, God, that you would have mercy on our nation uh, before you send your presence to us. God, we want you to have mercy upon our nation, mercy upon our houses, mercy upon our children, mercy upon us, God. Thank you for your grace that you extend yes, in our God. lives. Yes, Thank yes. you that you don't hold our sin to our charge. Thank you that you give us the chance to be free. Thank you that you ain't mad at us. Oh, yes, that you God. just want relationship with us. And then that we can extend you to others. Thank you, Lord, for those who gathered and those who are watching online. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. We lead from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody amen. said amen. amen. God bless you, Dominion. You are dismissed. Give somebody a kind of hug. Tune in tomorrow.